I have the new X-H2S in my hands. I was asked by Fujifilm to review this camera or to test it. And so I uh, asked a group of friends, gravel cyclists, to help me out, make a little video and make some pictures with this new camera. It has the new sensor, it has the new processor, which means that everything will be a lot faster than before. And I'm really curious to see how all this will work and how the video capabilities of this camera will turn out. Just a little disclaimer, this is a pre-production camera which means that it is not yet the final version with the final version of the firmware that will be in the store soon. Um, so that means that things might still change a bit but in my experience with Fujifilm that only means that the final version will be even better. <laughs> I always love the classic retro dials of the Fujifilm cameras. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why I went to Fujifilm in the first place. This camera doesn't have them, but for the kind of camera it is, I think it is probably the best choice. Um, if you are looking for a hybrid camera, you want to be able to switch really fast from one setting to another. Um, I have mine programmed because you have lots of uh, custom functions. You have seven custom functions. Like my custom function one is video in 4K with 25 frames. Custom function two is 50 frames. Custom function three is 120 frames. Um, four is uh, pictures. Five is action pictures. Six is pictures in black and white. Doesn't matter, but you can set all those things in these individual uh, custom settings. So with just one turn of this dial, you can uh, have a completely different feature set, which in my opinion is a big advantage. The grip is very deep and very sturdy. Um, and definitely if you're working with bigger lenses, if you're working with microphones, monitors, it definitely helps the stability and the feel of the camera. The camera in general feels very, very sturdy and I have no doubt that it will stand up to professional work and working in less than ideal conditions. On the left side of the camera, there's plenty of ports. For the first time, we have a full-size HDMI, which I think is uh, great if you want to work with a monitor or a, an external recorder. It's a much safer uh, and stable connection. You also have a microphone port and a headphone port and a USB port, so no dongles, and everything is accessible from the body of the camera itself. The screen flips out and turns in any direction that you need it to turn. I find that very useful for video. And if you, if you think it's in the way, you can always close it and use it like this or protect your screen by just closing it this way. It's a matter of personal preference. I think that in some situations, I like the more classical um, setup of the X-T3, for example, and on other situations, in other situations, I prefer this. I was very curious to test out the new autofocus algorithms and system, and I'm not disappointed, not at all. The subject tracking is pretty impressive. Face and uh, eye detect works really, really well, even at f1.4 and at a distance, it, the camera uh, recognizes faces very quickly and very precisely. We also have subject tracking now, where we can follow animals, birds, planes, uh, automobiles, everything, and it tracks it really, really well, even in video. Auto 
focus is just one aspect of speed but i feel like in general this camera is a lot easier and faster to operate with the new processor of the fifth generation and the new sensor of the fifth generation uh, we can have options that we have never seen before definitely in video we have 6k we have 4k up to 120 frames per second we can shoot 240 frames per second in hd uh, we can shoot prores we can shoot raw we can shoot h265 h264 we all have these options so you have a setting for everyone in any situation and i believe that uh, that is a big game changer for people like me who are shooting uh, boat stills and video the speed also has something to thank for with the new cards um, the camera has a classic sd card slot but also a, a cf express type b uh, slot and this allows to uh, have these high video uh, bit rates and at the same time shoot at 40 frames per second uh, stills with the electronic shutter and 15 frames with the mechanical shutter and this basically without having any issues with buffering <laughs> I've been pretty impressed with the IBIS, the in-body image stabilization. For stills, I can shoot at ridiculously low shutter speed with the camera just in my hands, no tripods. But mostly for video, I'm impressed because the IBIS allows me a, a lot of natural movement because it takes away like the, the shocks and the, the little trembles, but keeps the whole movement natural. Most compact cameras, if you put a lot of bitrate through them in video, they heat up. Uh, but I have to say that for me during this whole day, I never had any problems with heat. And I'm pretty sure that you have to push this camera really, really, really far before it overheats. But should you need extra cooling because you're doing extremely long recordings at high bit rates, then there is the optional cooling fan, which you can simply screw on to the camera and then you will not have any problems with heat at all. Fujifilm has announced not just one battery grip, but two. This one is the classic battery grip. You just have two extra batteries. And by the way, the battery life is excellent with this new camera. Uh, and you have the vertical grip. This one has network connectivity on top of that. So there's extra batteries, extra power in it, but you can also connect it better over Wi-Fi than with just a body, or you can use it over a network cable for fast uh, file transfers and even multi-camera options for video. Today's test has really impressed me. I'm really impressed by the new XH2S. I've already pre-ordered my own copy and I'm looking forward to see what I can do with it in the future when it comes to video and action.